us off the shores of God's own land of haven, blessed at sea. Praise him. Praise him. Yo ho. Let's go. A faithful band in his command to spread his love and glee. Praise him. Praise him. Yo ho. Let's go. The joyful servants of the Lord's own kingdom through and through we follow his decrees. Join with Captain Jesus and his faithful followers. Come along. He calls for volunteers. Jake. Ahoy. Izzy. Ahoy. Come in. Ahoy. Finnegan. Ahoy. Captain Jesus and his faithful followers. On to the call, dear friends, and be his faithful crew. Let's go with Jesus and his faithful followers. We follow his plan together. Come on and join the crew. Amen. Let's go. Good morning, Captain Finnegan. Ah, uh, I really slept so great last night. It's so good to sleep on deck when the Jolly Roger is at sea. Good morning, crew. Ah, yes, indeed. I slept really well last night. I feel so fresh today. The weather is beautiful, clear skies, which means smooth sailing for us. We will take over from you, Jake, so that you can come and get some rest. Good morning, everyone. I think I rested pretty good last night. I think Cubby is the one who will need to sleep in today. Our morning crew. I was in a dreamland all night. It was not I who captained the Jolly Roger last night. Oh no! Was there no one to direct the Jolly Roger last night? That means we would have drifted off course. Oh boy! What? Are we lost at sea? Oh no! What will we do? This isn't good. We don't have enough supply to last us. Relax. What about Cubby's map? That can help us get back on track. Marvelous idea, Jake. Let's take a look at the map. While we read the map and try to find out where we are, let us all sing a song together. The Bible is the treasure, I open it and I see. Jesus wants to be my friend and God loves me. The Bible is the treasure, I read it and I find. I'm part of God's big family and He loves me all the time. All the time. My friend and God loves me. The Bible is the treasure. I read it and I find I'm part of God's big family and He loves me all the time. All the time. Now we can finally head back on our journey. A map is a very important tool to have when on a journey. It helps navigate and direct us. This actually reminds me of a Bible story. Let's take a look at our Bible. God's story, wilderness. So part of God's story is about how God took care of his family in the wilderness. And it begins like this. For many years, God's family was stuck as slaves in Egypt. So. God chose a guy named Moses to lead them out of slavery and into an amazing home called Canaan, or the Promised Land, where they could be free. From the moment the Israelites left Egypt, God made it clear that He was with His family. He led them with a cloud during the day and a pillar of fire at night. He actually split the Red Sea in two parts so they could walk to safety. But the journey from Egypt to the Promised Land was hard. In fact, the Israelites didn't know where to find food and water, or when they would get to Canaan. So just three days after leaving Egypt, they started complaining. What are we going to drink? Now Moses knew that God hadn't freed them from Egypt and parted the Red Sea just to let them die of thirst in the desert. So he asked the Lord to help, and God helped. Then 
About a month later, they complained again. If only the Lord had killed us back in Egypt, they moaned. There, we sat around pots filled with meat and ate all the bread we wanted. Now you have brought us into this wilderness to starve us to death. They actually wished they could be slaves again. Kids, have you ever complained about something instead of trusting God for help? Well, guess what? God had a plan his family never could have imagined. In the morning, dew covered the ground, and when it was gone, there were flakes of food that looked like frost. The Israelites called it manna, which means, what is it? Moses told them to eat it all and not to save any. But of course, some people saved a little, just to be safe. Remember, they were worried they wouldn't have what they needed. The next morning, the old manna was full of maggots, which are little bugs. Yuck! But the good news is, there was also new manna. See, God wanted them to trust him every single day. What's really crazy though, is on the sixth day of every week, God did tell them to gather enough for two days. That way, they had one day to rest. It's called a Sabbath and it's a day of rest. So when they woke up on the seventh day of the week, the manna they had saved was as fresh as it was when it first fell. We don't know how that happened, but it did. Well, the Israelites kept traveling, following the cloud and fire, eating new manna every day, and getting a Sabbath every week. It might seem pretty clear that God was with them, but they weren't so sure. At one point, they even said to Moses, is the Lord with us or not? Why did you bring us out of Egypt? Are you trying to kill us with thirst? The people had stopped trusting Moses, which really meant they had stopped trusting God just because things got hard. Moses knew God had a plan though, and he asked for help. Turns out, God had another miracle in store. God said, take your staff, strike the rock, and water will come gushing out. And it did. For about 40 more years, God's family wandered the desert. And all that time, God kept on giving them food, water, rest, and protection. He even kept their clothes from wearing out. God's family couldn't take care of themselves on their own. They had to trust God, but he always gave them just enough, just in time, and often in ways they could have never expected. And that's the story of how God took care of his family in the wilderness. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. God wanted his family to be free. God led them with a cloud and fire. He parted the Red Sea. The Israelites got thirsty and complained. God gave them water. They got hungry and complained again. God gave them food. They got thirsty and complained again. God gave them water. Again, for 40 years, God gave them what they needed. All they had to do was trust every day. And that's a part of God's story. A map helps direct and navigate a traveler on their journey. In life, we also need help to be directed through life. We are so fortunate that we have God to guide us through life. God guided the Israelites in the wilderness. God accompanied them. He was with them in a pillar of cloud and of fire. God assisted them. The pillar of cloud moved behind them while they went into the sea. The pillar of fire gave them light so they could travel at night. God gave them direction. Wherever the pillar of cloud or pillar of fire went, they were to follow and when it stopped, they were to stop. The pillars of cloud and fire may have shown the people the way in the desert, but ultimately, Every time we see God guiding his people, it points us to the truth that Jesus is the way. He is the one we are to follow. And it's only by knowing him and following him that we can know God. From me, Captain Flint and my crew, ahoy me lads and lasses. But first, gather round and let's set the mood right with an uplifting sea shanty. Sing along with me. Come on and set sail on the deep blue sea We're on the search for treasure, oh what can it be? It's not gold and silver, it's not gems and beads You be special treasure, God's chosen you and me 
You are the treasure. For me? Yes, you. You are the treasure. For me? Yes, you. We be the treasure. Mateys, it's true. God's special treasure be me and you. Come on and set sail on the deep blue sea. We're on the search for treasure. Oh, what can it be? It's not gold and silver. It's not gems and beads. You be special treasure. God's chosen you and me. You are the treasure. For me? Yes, you. You are the treasure. For me? Yes, you. We be the treasure. Mateys, it's true. God's special treasure be me and you. God's special treasure be me and you.